Steve, you, you talk about Alabama's, uh, you know, their technique and how smart they are and things like that. Is that all testament to what Coach Saban has brought mm -hmm. in? Because it seemed like before he got there, yeah. they weren't doing a lot of those things. Well, it's testament to good coaching and, and good recruiting. <clears throat> uh, really, really good athletes. Uh, uh, you start with, and obviously they've done an excellent job recruiting. Uh, I read the other day that one of the recruiting experts said Alabama and Florida that are the two top recruiting uh, schools in the nation now, whereas Southern Cal used to be here, and maybe even Texas. Uh, uh, but if you watch, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I watched Texas against Oklahoma a little bit last Saturday. I don't know if you guys watched that game, uh, but uh, athlete-wise, I don't think Texas is close to Alabama right now. I just think Alabama's athletes uh, compared to Texas right now is uh, a pretty, pretty huge difference to strength and speed and so forth. Thank you. Coach, can you talk about um, Garrett Chisholm and how well he's played since becoming a starter and him also being nominated for the Campbell Trophy? Okay, yeah, Garrett's a, a fine young man, does everything we ask around here, excellent student, and uh, came here as a walk-on. I don't, I don't think he qualified out of high school. Went to a little college up in Kentucky, up in Pikeville, and uh, showed up in our office one day wanting to walk on for the football team uh, a little over a year ago. So we uh, we gave him an opportunity and uh, went to the scout squad. And then pretty soon last year, uh, Coach Lorenzo Ward, he said, that, that walk-on kid, Chisholm, you need to take him over to the real team. So we took him off the scout team, and, and he was starting by the end of the year. Uh, I think he started the last four or five games, so forth. So he's done well in there, and uh, yeah, we would love to have had him for four years. Uh, but uh, two uh, two is pretty good, so we're, we're glad to have him with us. Steve, what did you learn about Connor in the end of that Auburn game? Just how he operated the offense. Uh, I know he had the interceptions, but just how he did things. Yeah, that was the only one bad play. As soon as he threw that one, I said, oh, no. <laughs> that was one that, uh, but other than that, he scrambled around and uh, threw the ball, made some plays, got hit hard one time, stayed in the pocket, took some hits. Uh, he, pl he played pretty well. Uh, and, and really, the last play, uh, Alshon, you know, had two hands on the ball, and uh, they knocked it out. So, uh, yeah, Connor, Connor played well. He's, uh, <laughs> Uh, we think he's going to be a real good player, and uh, we don't know if he's quite ready yet or not, but uh, we'll, we'll have to just see how it goes. You know, we're all hoping Steven will play up to his potential and take care of the ball, and uh, and then Connor will be ready when, when his turn comes. Do you, plan, do you have a plan for Connor at all this week? Oh, no, we, uh, we may have some a play or two here or there uh, that he gets in early. We may, we may not. Depends on how it goes. What does Alabama do in the red zone defensively that makes them so difficult? Is it effort, scheme, the change hands? Oh, I don't know exactly uh, the answer for that, except uh, they, they were pretty tough around the one-yard line, one, two-yard line. They, they get everybody up in there, that, that's for sure. And, and they cover pretty well if you're trying to throw also, I guess. But uh, again, uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes uh, against teams like this, you, you don't want to get to their one-yard line. You'd rather you'd rather get to their seven or eight or something like that. Sometimes it's actually easier to score from from that distance. Uh, <clears throat> but one thing uh, that that, uh, that I do like about Coach Elliott, our line coach, is he, he likes to stay spread out down there, and, uh, and and that's what we've been doing. And we've been a, a lot better running the ball in, as most of you guys know, than we have in the past. Uh, whether or not we can do it this week, we just have to find out if we if we get down there and so forth. Okay. And we, we're planning on getting down there. We're planning on it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We've heard you talk about doing things that have never been done in school mm -hmm. before. Is being a top ranked team one of those things that you feel like is an important milestone? <clears throat> well, the opportunity's there. The opportunity's there. I, I think it's been there before, and uh, we haven't quite done it. So that uh, yeah, that's an opportunity. Uh, but we don't, we don't really talk about that. We're trying to talk about how to play the game the best we can, how to, how to take care of the ball, be smart, this, that, and the other. and uh, Just try to put ourselves in a position that if we play our best and maybe they don't, uh, you know, something could happen. So that, that's what we got to concern ourselves with uh, all the way 
up to the game and through the game. Steve, you talk about opportunity. I guess you've got the opportunity to get to that number two spot on the SEC wins list. Uh, yep. Is that something <laughs> you, I mean, obviously you'd be proud of that, I would assume. Is it something you can even think about this week or any game? Oh no, I really uh, haven't thought about that. I was I was hoping we were going to get that over with at, at the Auburn game, but we didn't. Uh, but no, we're not we're not talking or worried about that right now. Uh, hopefully, we can win another conference game somewhere as we go through. Uh, but again, uh, uh, that's an individual thing that you know years from now might be fun to look back at. But right now, it's not uh, it's not a big deal. Coach, how confident are you with the overall depth at this point in the season? Overall depth? Yes. Uh, we don't have many injuries. Uh, we've never been real deep at certain positions, but uh, most of our guys are healthy and ready to play right now. Shaq Wilson's out. Uh, he was a starter last year. He really hadn't played much this year. Tried to play the last game against Auburn. Didn't play very well. Just couldn't run, couldn't move like he normally does. Did recover a couple of fumbles, so uh, he was there when their guy fumbled. So he <coughs> did do that. Uh, but he just, he's not moving around like uh, he was last year, and uh, uh, there's a chance we may try to hold him out and redshirt him this year. Okay. Okay. Steve, yeah. you, you've gone up against uh, so many of the great coaches in the game. Knowing that Coach Saban has a lot to do with the defense, uh, what's it like matching wits with that guy strategy-wise? I guess we first... Uh, coached against each other in 2000, 2001, and uh, those were two of two of the real good offenses we had down there at Florida. So we, uh, we, we looked like we were a lot smarter than he was those two games. Uh, but recently, uh, I'm trying to think, I had another game. Uh, he's a lot smarter than I was last year, let's put it that way. And uh, who knows who's going to be the smartest this year? Who knows who's going to be the smartest? I, read something interesting in the paper the other day about the, the Ryder Cup golf matches. Uh, one writer said whoever whoever wins the Ryder Cup, that captain will be considered somewhere between John Wooden and Vince Lombardi. And he said the loser, he'll be considered like an SEC football coach after a loss. He'll be the dummy. And that's just the way it is. And uh, we all know that. As coaches, we all know that. And of course, we've learned sometimes you can win and still be a dummy. We've learned that recently, too, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's part of coaching. That is part of coaching that uh, we all accept. But, uh, the winner, winner's a smart guy, and usually the loser is a guy that looking for looking for help somewhere. Okay. Well, following up on that, Steve, uh, Nick gets a lot of credit as one of the, the best defensive coaches in the country. Does he do anything special, or is it just – the, the tackling. And it's a little of both. It's a little of both. But, uh, you know, obviously, one thing I think they do extremely well, and, and, and I was telling our, our receivers that day watching tape, is, is that they really they run with you. I mean, they don't play behind and break on the ball. A lot of their coverages is uh, they just get right with you and start running. And even if you're uh, behind them and, and the ball's coming, uh, that defender is going to hit your arm right when it gets there. He, he's going to be breaking it up. And they've, they've had a lot of breakups like that in the end zone, even the Florida game. I don't know if you noticed, uh, they knocked, knocked it out. May have had one interference there, so forth. But uh, their, their DBs do a good job of really clinging uh, to the receivers. Uh, they, they get in their face, they, they jump into them. <clears throat> and uh, you're going to have to get open, and the quarterback's going to have to throw a, a good pass uh, if he's going to catch it without getting hit while the ball's coming. Uh, so that's one thing I think uh, Nick coaches extremely well. And if you watch their DBs play, they're, they're usually pretty close uh, to the guy they're covering and, and then swiping at the ball. Is that where, obviously, he's kind of a <clears throat> DB guy. Is that what you really see? Yeah, I think that's sort of his thing. I think he enjoys coaching the DBs and linebackers. And uh, when I see some of their practice tape on TV, that usually he's, he's coaching the DBs, it seems like. But he's, a, he's an overall head coach. He knows what's going on with with, with everything throughout throughout the team. Steve, the way, uh, the way Alabama's taken off the last couple of years, do you think that's helping the SEC West kind of try and keep up with them? I mean, that's where this year it looks like that's where the undefeated teams are right now. 
in the West over the East. Yeah, the West has played better in the East thus far. And I think we may have to, you know, wait to. It's all over with. Uh, obviously, Arkansas, and Mississippi State's gotten a lot better. Uh, Auburn, LSU, Alabama, always been uh, strong teams, of course. And uh, Ole Miss, uh, uh, Ole Miss is a strong team too. They had a couple of setbacks. I, I think they didn't think they were going to have. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, no question. The West appears better than the East right now. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was interesting last Saturday. Every team in the West won, and every team in the East lost, except the except one, for you guys. except the two that didn't play. Yeah, I don't think Arkansas played either. Did the two that didn't play? So anyway, yeah, we realize uh, uh, we realize this is an important game, and we realize there's a lot of big games down the road also. Uh, but again, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what happens here Saturday afternoon. Well, there's a lead in to you gave Alabama pretty high compliments in blocking and tackling. How do you, your team in those areas? Our team in blocking and tackling, uh, after the last game, we need to get better. We need to get better. We, we're not real good at, at either of those, I don't think. Uh, <clears throat> but we've been uh, we've been pretty good uh, uh, other games. Uh, probably the Georgia game was certainly our best uh, defensive game probably of the year. Uh, offensively, we've had our good little spurts here and there. And in fact, um, actually, the Auburn game was one of our best offensive games through the first three quarters. We scored four touchdowns in seven possessions, and um, that was pretty good. Uh, but we didn't do much in the fourth quarter, as it turned out. Okay. All right. See you guys.